Saint Therese, in her writings, often said she longed for the moment of her death. This same desire was expressed by many, if not all, of the other saints. And why? Because for them, death was the only way to full possession of the one they loved more than everything else in the world. And the death they finally received was usually one of great suffering, but also how glorious. For it is probably safe to assume that it was in those moments of their great painful agony that they were most united to Jesus in his agony. What a privilege to be found worthy to share in his suffering and death in that way. Then we know many saints went straight to heaven, and what a welcome they would have received from our Lord. It is beautiful to think that if they, with their imperfect love, had so longed for him, how much more he, with his infinite love, had so longed for them. Now that soul was irrevocably his, and would enjoy the fruits of his redeeming act for all eternity for death had sealed its fate. Now if only our own death could be just like that, filled with such faith, perseverance, and love, even at the cost of such suffering. But we cannot choose the exact death we die. We can only prepare for it. And one can only prepare for a holy death by living a holy life. So in Carmel we strive to do this. In fact, we practice dying each day, not literally, but by killing our own will, renouncing our own desires, striving to erase our sins and imperfections. And even if we will never be asked to literally be martyred, I think our Lord still calls each and every one of us to that act of supreme love, of laying down our life for our friends. So we spend ourselves for our sisters, putting their good before our own, serving them in charity, we offer our little prayers, sacrifices, and penances for the salvation of all those God has entrusted to us. And in doing so, we lay down our lives for Jesus. Thus, we become united to our beloved dying on Calvary. And Carmelites especially should desire this, for he is our spouse, and the wife should be the first one to share in her husband's suffering. Of course, without the help of a tremendous amount of grace, we cannot do any of this, for without God we can do nothing. So may he, through his goodness and the intercession of the glorious saints, grant us this grace, that our own death and that of countless other souls might be precious in his sight. <laughs>